go. Good morning. Hey, Michelle, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, I'm great. And I first want to just say thank you. I really appreciate you jumping on this kind of Zoom podcast, the interview to talk about everything community acupuncture. Yes. And um, so without further ado, I want to jump in because I know in my coaching, a lot of people ask me questions about setting up community acupuncture, even if it's just adding it to the waiting room or going all in on it or dis continuing it or what have you. And you and I've worked together and I know you are the go-to expert on that. I know that you're going to be holding a mastermind on that, on community acupuncture, adding it to a practice or incorporating that within your practice. That's going to be November 19th from 10 to 12 at Pacific time. But before we get into that, let's just start. Let's just I'd love for you to share what drew you to community acupuncture, kind of like the genesis of that, how you yeah. created Zenden. Anybody listening, go to Zenden. It's in San Luis Obispo. And Michelle has created the most amazing, most gorgeous community acupuncture center. So Dr. Michelle Hamilton, take it over. Let's start at the beginning. What drew yeah. you towards community? Yeah, thank you so much for asking. Um, so what drew me towards community? I mean, a lot like everybody else, when I first started my practice, I practiced one-on-one. -on -one. I rented a space at a wellness center. Um, there's like five chiropractors there. And so I just started um, a couple days a week. I had a young baby and I was treating, you know, one person an hour, kind of pretty traditional style. And I grew over time. So um, by the end of about eight years into my practice, I was then renting three rooms um, full time and my practice was full. And I thought, okay, I achieved what I'm supposed to achieve. And like, this is it. And why am I not happy? And and I wasn't happy because I was still running into people that could really use my services and either they couldn't get in in time, I was booked two weeks out, or they couldn't afford me, you know? And a lot of the people I was running into were people like me. They were moms, they were my friends, they were, you know, not um, people that had a ton of money, but still could really benefit from acupuncture. Um, so I found it really frustrating. I was walking around with this awesome tool set that I was only utilizing for 1% of the population. Um, and then a lot of my patients would come like once a month just for wellness care. And, and that's great. And that's really valuable and um, important for your health. But I didn't feel like I was really practicing traditional Chinese medicine where it's like you have an ailment, you come in and we're going to see you, you know, every day, three times a week until this is better. Um, and then personally, I was going through my own thing. I went through my little dark night of the soul and um, I got divorced and I had two kids and I found myself in this financial situation where I couldn't even afford to see myself anymore, you know? And I was thinking about, wow, I'm going through this really, really hard time um, and I could really use some healing work. And I know other people are going through times like this and you can't afford it you know, and it would be great to have access to those things when we're going through these, these dark times. Cause a lot of times these dark times, we also don't have a lot of money. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of a mixture of all that. And I, I just felt inspired. I was like, let me see what I can do here. Um, so I went to a, a couple seminars and learned distal style acupuncture and was like, okay, let's give it a go. And, um, I wasn't ready to take a huge risk and completely overhaul my practice, um, but I looked at what was available and I had a patio, like a covered patio in, um, it was like a breezeway in the wellness center. And I was looking at that patio and I was like, you know what, like I could put 10 recliners out there, no problem, and do a lunch hour one day a week, like 12 to two on Thursdays. And I'll promote it a little bit, we'll do cash only, walk-ins only so no appointments I don't have to deal with any administrative stuff and just see what happens and so this was like for this was like five years ago so Facebook was really big then I mean it's whatever it's different now but so I created a Facebook event and um, I uh, promoted it a little bit to my patients who were already coming and I opened it up it was just me and we just did walk-ins and it just took off like people loved, people were getting treated outside. 
<laughs> and we were doing sliding scale, 20 to $40. And after about six months, I was seeing 20 people in two hours and I was making good cash. <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. You know, I've got some extra spending money. Um, it's all cash. And it was just a great way. And the patients loved it. They were like, now I can get two treatments a week, you know, cause I can afford this or, there was people who were curious about acupuncture and wanted to try it, you know, so it was great for that. It was great for me professionally because I got to try some different treatments that I wasn't exactly comfortable with yet um, utilizing in my practice. It was a no pressure way to be like, let's try that distal treatment. Like, I don't know if it'll work, but I'll just try it. And so my skills got better because I was taking more risks and I was learning more things and I was able to see more of a volume of patients and get the experience I needed to become a better practitioner. So it really served both of us. Um, and then after that was full, I was like, okay, there, you know, I'm always like a what's next person. And I was like, okay, like this is, this is the thread here. Like, let's follow it. And um, so I looked around the area, I found a basement that was for rent downtown and there was no signage outside. So it was just like downstairs and no windows. <laughs> it was pretty scummy. It was like moldy, but it was a tiny space and it was a really good deal on rent. So I was like, I'm just gonna try it and see how it goes. So we rented it. I got my, moved my 10 recliners down there and um, I was still splitting my space. I wasn't convinced this was like a real business. So I was still running my, my private practice and I'd hop over there like 10 hours a week and just run this little community clinic. And I had one shelf of retail and after about a year that blew up. And, um, and a lot of, we tried some new things. I tried a membership style, which is kind of unique. Um, and that's one of the things I'll talk about in my class that's been um, really beneficial at, um, at stabilizing our income and um, covering our overhead costs because we have these automatic payments coming in every month for these people. And it, it turns out to work in your favor um, as a business. So we'll go over that in the class, um, our different memberships that we offer. Um, so yeah, so I tested out that membership model and then that blew up. So then I was like, okay, Maybe this we're on to something. And that's when I created the Zen Den, what it is now. We've been open for three and a half years or so. Um, and it's a hybrid clinic. So it's a little it's a little different. I have private treatment rooms, I've got a community space, we do community events. Um, it's just really versatile and really meets the needs of our modern society. I feel like there's some people that need an hour and a half with you. There's some people that don't. They're like, I've got tendonitis in my elbow. Like, can you just put some needles in it? And I don't, you know, I don't have time for an hour and a half. I just like, I want to fix my elbow. Um, so it, there's just like a big range of things that you can treat. And I love how versatile it is and how accessible it is because people can also just walk in you know, instead of, oh, I threw my back out. When can you see me, Michelle, in two weeks? Well, that's not really going to help me, you know. Um, and then the, just the community aspect of it has been really awesome. Then I wasn't anticipating that at all. Um, I was mainly thinking like, oh, this is going to be affordable and people will tolerate being treated with other people because it's cheaper, you know, and that's like a downside. But um, especially when the pandemic hit, um, people kept coming to community acupuncture. We spaced out our recliner, so it was like safe or whatever. And um, people just kept showing up. And I was like, this is weird. Aren't they afraid? What's going on? But a lot of these people, the only person they would, like during lockdown, the only person they saw the whole time was me. Like they'd come in and they get treated and there'd be other people there and they felt a part of something, you know, and they felt connected to their community. And that was the only interaction they had with other people. So I really started to kind of pick up this community thread um, and how healing that is. Um, I feel like when we gather with the same intention, whatever it is, to heal, to find peace, to love each other or ourselves or whatever, whatever our intention is, that amplifies in a group setting. So it's the same as like when you do yoga at home, it's like, yeah, this is okay. When you go to a yoga class, you're like, oh yeah, I'm feeling this, you know? It's the same with the acupuncture, it's no different. So people actually get better faster, they feel better after, they feel more connected. 
It's about creating that energetic field of healing that really brings people back. So a couple tangents there, but um, that's, that's what we're doing. That's how we started. Um, now I have two acupuncturists that um, work under me now. Um, I've got three front desk staff and then two massage therapists. So this has really grown um, not only for the community, but it's also been a great way for me to utilize some passive income opportunities um, in the building of this brand and in the building of the structure that I created that anybody can come in and offer treatments. That's a lot of the work and a lot of what I'll share with you in our mastermind class or master class, sorry, is um, how to create a system that you can repeat and that anybody can step in and do these treatments and um, get great results. And you don't have to be there all the time to make an income. <laughs> I, I love that. And actually I've never really heard that analogy of the yoga class and community and kind of comparing the two experiences. Yeah. And I've, I've also done community acupuncture at a time in my life where I just wanted to ride my bike. Uh, I was living in Encinitas, I had my private practice and a friend of mine had community acupuncture and I did it for fun. Yeah. You know, I, and it was lucrative. In fact, one, two stories that kind of tie in on this, a girlfriend of mine, she teaches yoga and um, she gets so much money for a yoga class. And she also does yoga at the farmer's market and it's donation based only on Saturdays. And mm -hmm. she said she makes more money on the donation based only <laughs> Saturday <laughs> yoga class than she does at the studio. So it's kind of like just that sense of giving back to community, creating that sense of community is mm -hmm. part of this that isn't necessarily tied to the monetization or the financial abundance that comes from it. But I do feel like it kind of shows that financial abundance can follow when you just set something like this up. So I love that analogy. I want to go back to when you first started um, before the basement. So you see, you see that you have un- uh, monetized space. You have this patio in your practice and mm -hmm. you're like, I can use that, right? Because you're paying rent on it. So um, where did you start? Like, did you go get those chairs from like big five or not big five? What's it called? Um, big lots or where did you get your first chairs? Amazon? A, yeah, Amazon. I, I, yeah, it's funny. I should bring a picture. I have a picture of when all the chairs got delivered, <laughs> like just 10 boxes and I'm like laying on, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I just ordered them from Amazon. They were like, I don't know, 200 bucks and, um, got 10 of them. And some of them I still have now <laughs> they're still going strong. Um, yeah, you just, that's pretty much your startup clap. Like cost is the recliners. You've already got your needles. You've already got all that stuff. You don't need front desk. You know, I would just have people write their name write down how much they want to pay. It was cash. So they just put the money in there and it's pretty simple. I mean, we're a little bit more sophisticated now, but that's all you need to start. You know, like this is easy and there's a demand for this and it really, it feeds your private practice too. That was the other thing that was surprising to me. It's like, why would people pay $200 to see me when they could pay 30 sliding scale, you know, but what people, what happens is people come in and they really like you and they want more of you you know, or they want a back treatment or they want cupping or they want e-stem or they want to talk to me about their diet, you know, and, and, you know, you just keep clear boundaries around that. You're like, well, that's a private session. I would love to talk to you about that. Would you, let's get you scheduled for that. And they, they want that, you know, and they slide right in. A lot of them go back and forth too. They'll do a private yeah. session. And I'll be like, right now you just need a volume of visits. You need 12 visits. So we can do this yeah. out here. We can do it in here. It's up to you. Um, and they really like that. They really like, um, being able to decide which way they want to go with that. Yeah. 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 And when you're talking about recliners, uh, yeah. there's all sorts of types, like even modern acupuncture is somewhat community style. Their yeah. recliners are really fancy, but mm -hmm. like you can even just start with an those anti-gravity chairs, right? I mean, that's what I use. Yeah. Yeah. Gravity, yeah. They're super clean. You just wipe them down. They're yep. breathable. People love them. Um, and then there's like, you know, there's a range, you could get a really fancy recliner. You could, you know, you could start with just the zero gravity chairs. We did those and we did blankets originally. And then with COVID we're like, I don't know about this. So now we have heat lamps. So everybody has a heat lamp. Um, they love it. You know, why not? Um, 
and that's really it. I've got one cart. Um, I actually have two carts now with needles in it. Push that around. I've got timers for everybody, little sand timers that are silent. Um, so yeah, we got it dialed and it's pretty easy. Yeah. You can really get so fun and creative with yeah. this style of acupuncture. I know here locally in San Diego, you're in San Luis Obispo. I encourage everybody to look up Zen Den. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I know you guys have gained a lot, um, won a lot of awards and I'm going to get to that in a second. But yeah. what uh, just came to my mind was there's a practitioner here in San Diego, Josh Nuremberg, and he took over an old hair salon. And yeah. so it's kind of similar, like people are in salon chairs and they recline back and he does community style facial rejuvenation using micro needling pens and acupuncture. And he has membership models. Like you can get really creative with around a niche or not a niche or just be general, but it can be a way to serve more people um, at one time or totally utilize your space or like you've done with the hybrid, you started with the patio, you went to the basement. Are you still in the basement or you've moved out of the basement? No, we, we came out of the basement. Um, we're into the light. We're on ground floor. We've got parking. Yeah. So we're out of there. We found a bigger space. Mm -hmm. It's good. What I love about that is so many people wait until everything's perfect. I can't open this up until it's perfect. I need to have brochures. I need business cards. I need fancy websites. And I think you would also agree with me. You don't need any of that. You just yeah. need some space, right? And maybe some reclining chairs. Yeah. And some needles. Yeah. yeah. And like launch you, the plane and then start building it. <laughs> yeah, right? Like you started with the patio, then you went to the basement. Now yeah. you're in a gorgeous space with, with the, but don't wait for everything to be perfect. So tell me a little bit about the awards. I know you have received a lot of rewards in your community for the service you guys are offering. Yeah, so we got, um, we won best acupuncture clinic in Slow County two years in a row now. Um, and it was actually the first year that it was. So every year there's a publication here where we vote on the best of everything, like in San Luis Obispo County. So like best dentist, best accountant, best whatever. So yeah, we won best acupuncture clinic um, two years in a row and we're hoping for another year here. <laughs> it was a big surprise actually. I didn't even, cause there wasn't a category. I'd look other years. I'm like, there's no acupuncture category. That's lame. And then they called me and they're like, you guys won best acupuncture clinic. I was like, I didn't know we had a category. I would have like voted for myself at least, you know? So that was a great surprise. <laughs> but you won anyway. And I love yes. that. So I mean, that's part of it too. Like part of a strategy of growing the practice might be to reach out to the best of list in your area. And I know in your masterclass in November, um, and if, if you're listening to this recording after November, the masterclass will, the recording to the masterclass will be available. So look yeah. for that. It's either going to be on my website, drreese.com or on Dr. Michelle's website, which is, which is, what is your website again? Is it Zen Den? Uh, Zen Slow, S-L-O. S-L-O.com. So make sure you're checking this out. But I mean, this is such a viable strategy for growing your practice for um, augmenting your practice. Either you can be the practitioner. You can, like you said, you have practitioners, associates there that work at the center as well. So you are now providing a place for other acupuncturists to work and to thrive. And so it doesn't have to be you if you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to do acupuncture in a community setting. Well, you can create that environment so that somebody can come in and thrive in your um, location. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's just so many, so many options there. Tell me, um, uh, give, I want to, I want to do the good and the bad and the ugly. So, uh, give me an example of some of the, like, you know, heartwarming successes, like some of the things where you're like, this is why it's all worth it. Oh gosh. I mean, heartwarming successes. I mean, there's always those people that come in and they're in crippling pain and you do one treatment and it's gone, you know? and they paid 30 bucks and they just like, they go tell everybody, you know? Yeah. Um, but that you have those in private practice, you know? Um, 
but those are always heartwarming. I mean, there's women who, you know, are doing fertility treatments and can't afford private sessions and they get to come to acu community acupuncture and support their preg support getting pregnant that way. There's people who, um, who met like their significant other at community <laughs> acupuncture. Like, I think I might have like one marriage that happened because they met like next to each other there's friendships that have happened there there's people that have like swapped recipes like um so that that's rewarding to witness um oh gosh okay so what's the bad um i mean i think the the hardest part is is burnout um when you're treating that volume of people you really have to take care of yourself. You really have to learn to say no, learn to protect your own energy. Um, it does, that type of style can attract people that are really wanting your energy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to, I'm sure if you've practiced long enough, you understand that type of person, right? Needy, overly needy, no yeah. boundaries, no boundaries and very needy. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so I've had to really learn, and a lot of this is helpful if you have a front desk staff, because I tell them this is what I need and then they implement it. Whereas if you come to me and you're like, Michelle, I could really use a treatment Saturday night, then I'll be like, okay, you know, <laughs> like, I'll, yeah. I'll come for you, you know, but if you have front desk staff, that's like, absolutely not. Like if I never hear it or see it, it's fine. But if it comes to me, I'll start, you know kind of bending my boundaries a little bit to take care of other people. So I think that's the I hardest. Need, yeah. I need to have, a, have, yeah, have that, that buffer, have a buffer. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So that's and you the offer retail, you, you have retail <laughs> in your location. Is that all? Uh, have you found that to be successful? Oh my gosh. Yes. Because I've got volume coming through there. You know, this is like Grand Central Station. So I have um, close to like 150 people coming through there just for community a week. So what do you do? You put easy to grab purchases, you know, like, and it's just the easiest stuff. Like, you know, those eye patch things, those little collagen things for a puff. I was like, I bought a bunch of those wholesale, put them right by the cash register at checkout five bucks people want to buy, you know, like stuff like that, where it's like, this is revenue, you know, like this really adds up chapstick, um, like, um, mineral based sunscreen, things like that, where they don't need me to tell them this is the herbal formula for you. We have a full Chinese herbal formula. I mean, herbal pharmacy. Um, but a lot of just grab and go items that have been really lucrative, um, for the clinic and really beneficial. Um, the other thing that's cool is like, you've got this community space now and you can, if you're a creative person, it's like sky's the limit. We've been doing the coolest events. Like we've been doing breath work classes. Um, we just move all the recliners cause they're movable. We put mats out. We're doing breath work classes now. Um, last week we did a Reiki acupuncture event where I had my 10 recliners. I needled everybody. And then a Reiki practitioner did Reiki on everybody. And then she did Oracle card readings at the end hundred bucks for that. It's two hours, right? This is rev This is like creative revenue. And there's just a big demand for these type of things. We do acupuncture sound baths. So I'll needle everybody. Then they do a 50 minute sound healing. Um, that's 50 bucks right there, you know, and you've got 10 people. It's $500. Like this is easy, you know, creative ways to make money. And you're bringing people in your door, your people are learning who you are. They're grabbing a eye face mask on their way out. I mean, it all, you need to, it all adds up, you know, and it's all yeah. in energy um, towards abundance and really creating a space where people know they can go for, for healing. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I love it. It just sounds like the win-win. It just sounds like yeah. it's just uh, such a beautiful creation and a way a beautiful way to serve on so many levels I love that you said like marriages have happened from there <laughs> yeah. one of one of my dearest friends I met at that community clinic that I used to ride my bike to 
And in Sunitas, she came there not because she wanted the low cost, but because it, she could walk there. She used to love to walk around barefoot. So she would love to walk there um, from her house in Encinitas. And that's how I met her. And she's been a lifelong friend of mine. And you just, these things, um, you just never know where they're going to lead. But this is such a beautiful way to pay it forward, to give and to share our tools with the communities in which we live. I just mm -hmm. love it. Yeah, I love it. So let's talk a second about the upcoming workshop. So you're going to do a master class November 19th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. It will be recorded and the recording will be available uh, pretty much indefinitely. So if anybody is going to miss a portion of it, they can get the recording. I know you can sign up for it on my website, but tell us a little bit more about what you're going to cover in the two hour master class on community acupuncture. Right. Um, okay. So in the two hour master class, I'm going to give away all the secrets and all the things and all the mistakes that I've made the last four or five years. I'm going to share those with you so that you don't have to make those mistakes. Um, I'm going to go over what works. So the um, membership model, I've crunched all the numbers on that. I know what works and what doesn't. I know what the price point is. I know how many people you need to see an hour. Um, I know how, what you can afford to pay somebody to treat people. Um, so all the, the number end of it, I'm going to share. I'm going to share our flow. Like, what does it look like? How do I do an intake when I'm seeing, you know, six people an hour? Like, how does that, how do I, do I look at their tongue? Like, what does that look like? Um, follow through at the end. What do I tell people to get them to book again? How do I give a treatment plan in two minutes? You know, um, things like that. I'm going to go over another thing that makes us unique, which is our menu that I created. I'm going to share that with you. This is a menu where people come in and it's got like 12 treatments on it with cute names. So if you've never had, a lot of people come in, they're like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what I need. I don't. And they'll look at the menu and they're like, this can help with my sleep, you know? And I'm like, yeah, we have a sleepy time treatment, you know, and we can do that treatment. Um, we have a comfort menu as well with add-ons that you can add. So I'll go over that. I mean, I, this is all already figured out for you. I'll go over the, just the basics too, like what type of recliners to wear, uh, to wear, what type of recliners <laughs> to buy. Um, if you want to just do something in your waiting room, what that looks like. Um, we'll go over all that. And then of course I'll answer questions, um, be available for that. Yeah. What else? <laughs> I love it. No, I mean, I, I know you and I have worked outside of this on yeah. a larger program that, you know, stay tuned that there may be in the future a book or an even larger program that literally will walk you through every step and be supported that way. Because let's face it, like how much can you really give in two hours? But I know Michelle and I know her well enough to know she's going to give you as much as she can in the two hours and then her contact information for outside of that. Yeah. This masterclass is like $47, which it'll never be this inexpensive again. It's like a, it's like the sample you get at Costco to what could be in the future, a larger program, but that might be all you need to get you up and running in a community style acupuncture setting. And like Michelle said, save you time, money and headaches. You know, uh, my mentor says money loves speed. And it's like, if you could help me um, not stub my toe and all those mistakes, like you said that you made, uh, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. If you're considering community acupuncture in your practice, bringing it there, or you're already doing it and you want to find ways to make it more successful, or you're just exploring this idea Anywhere you are, like add it to the waiting room, or maybe you have a patio and you're like, oh my gosh, my patio, who knows, but come and join us on the 19th of November, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and if something uh, you'd like to get a hold of Dr. Michelle Hamilton, go to zendenslow, S-L-O.com and email her. And see, yeah. and, and that's how I you would can love contact that. her. Yeah. And yeah. then you Check know where to contact Instagram me. Instagram as well. You can follow us on Instagram. Zendun Slow is our handle. We're pretty active on there if you want to see what we're up to. Yeah. I love it. And if you're in the area, if you're near, if you're near San Luis Obispo, drop come in. Come to one of the events. These yeah. events sound amazing. Yeah. All that. right, my friends. We hope to see you soon. Awesome.
Thank you so much, East. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.